rear-mounted tank killer is Jeff Warner, expert on World War II rockets. The bazooka was the first of its kind at that time. It was very revolutionary. This was a shoulder-fired rocket, and it was space-age technology at the time. So, Jeff, this is the famous bazooka. And most people will still call any shoulder-mounted rocket a bazooka. The M1 bazooka and its variants was actually designed by Lieutenant Edward Ewell of the U.S. Army. He was given the task of finding out a way to have one guy deliver some kind of an explosive charge to vehicles, more specifically armored vehicles, with a shoulder-fired weapon to just be able to pop up behind some kind of cover and knock out a tank single-handedly. You know, today we see RPGs, we see law rockets, and they're a pretty common weapon on the battlefield. But this is the granddaddy of them all. Nothing like that existed before this right here. Before we fired the bazooka, it's time for a little rocket science. The destructive power of the detonation. Then they form the same amount of explosive into a shape charge, placing it in a wooden holder and set it a few inches above a second steel plate of the same size. Fire and hold. Now it's time to compare the differences. All right. Well, look at that. Look at the difference here. Yeah. So right here, where we laid the charge on top of the steel, just it just made a little mark. All that energy from that round moves up and away from this plate in all directions. Right. When you put a shape charge on top of that energy, it captures the energy and sends it back towards the steel plate. And that's how these warheads penetrate armor. They use a projectile shape charge. That's exactly right. Bazookas, RPGs, and similar weapons have a distinctive design, the telltale sign of a shape charge inside. All right, well, that's enough of the rocket science. So let's get down to the nitty gritty. Show me how to load and fire this thing. Right, well, it's a pretty simple procedure, really. This is basically just a hollow tube, and you've got a rocket that gets connected into the back of it and clips in here, and it's uh, fired electrically with a trigger here. So it's an electronic ignition system. Absolutely. To arm the rocket, goes in the back here. There's an arming switch here. You switch that to red. That means that the tube and the rocket is ready to fire. And then over here, this screen. What's the purpose of this screen on the front? Well, as the rocket leaves the tube, it's trailing fire and smoke. It's pretty intense. And the intent of the screen is to just protect the fire from a little bit of the back blast. Okay. But there's also a rudimentary sight here. It's a peep here with two posts in the front, one for 100 yards and one for 200 yards, and that's about it. All right, man, let's do it. All right. Jeff has set up a target for me, a machine gun nest located 150 yards away. Assuming my aim is good, Shock watch patches will measure the G-force of the rocket's impact. <laughs> All right. The blast did some serious damage, that's for sure. The bazooka's rocket is designed to penetrate a tank, so these targets had no chance. This thing does a good job. Hell yeah, it does. Look at that. Wow. Holy smokes. It blew this all to hell. Oh my god, look at these guys. This is what we call in the medical world multi system mutilating trauma. Oh, we've got our uh, shock watch patches here. This measures the concussive blast forces. This one has actually gone off. So that means that this guy absorbed 25 G's of force. Right here. We got another one, and again, this one's turned red, 25 G's of force. So if you did roll mm -hmm. into this as like a medical personnel, it's it's pretty traumatic. I mean, these guys are done for. So, Will, how was it firing that bazooka? Pretty exciting. I mean, it's nice to do something that guys were doing back in World War II, you know, the warriors that came before and experienced something that they experienced. In response to the American bazooka, Germany produces two of their own shape charge anti-tank weapons during World War II. More powerful than the American original, they terrorize Allied forces across Europe.